little more energized. And again, inhaling, reach way out to the side. Exhale, bringing your hands to your chest, elbows a little back still. Inhale to the front, keeping your shoulders down. And then exhale, hands behind, clasping the opposite way. So fingertips or fingers sliding over one position. And again, chest toward the ceiling, stretch your spine open, little upper body back bend, and pivot at your hips coming over. And again, just deepen into your forward bend as much as your lower back needs this morning. Hands toward your head, head toward your legs. Breathe and relax. And then again, slowly wind your way up. Feel the bones of your spine moving one at a time into place as much as you can as you finally come into the back bend in the upper body. And then inhale to the top, release your arms, and once more, feel your body and notice how it's working today. And then inhaling your arms out to the sides, turn your palms up and bring your arms right over your shoulders. Now, you can't see it on my screen. I hope you can on yours. Pass your hands past each other. Turn them around and clasp your hands. And then bring your arms back by your ears. Sitting bones toward the floor. Crown up and lean over into the side stretch so that you're getting the ribs opening. Push the foot you're leaning away from down. And just push out through your hands and the top of your head down into the foot. Inhale back upright. Put your hands to the other ones in front and pull your shoulders down. Again, lengthening up, breathe in, exhale, and pivot over. Reach out through your fingertips, out through the top of your head, down into the foot you're leaning away from, and make sure you're not leaning that top shoulder forward. And then again, inhale to the top and exhale back down. Feel your sides a little bit more stretched open and feel the inner response of your body. And we'll do our twist next. So inhaling, bring your arms to the sides again at shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, and then arms over your shoulders. Clasp your elbows, pull them back by your ears, and sitting bones toward the floor. Stretch the crown high, keep that spine nice and open for your twist, and then exhale and turn either direction. Lengthen up on the breath in, and then exhaling, pivot over. So just deepen into your position as far as that body wants to go this morning. Both feet evenly. Or as little as you need in the twist. And then inhaling, slow up toward the ceiling and pull your elbows back, lifting your chest really high for an upper body back bend, gentle on your low back while it's twisted. Inhale to the top, exhale back to the center, put your arms around, pull the shoulder blades down, and again, stretch the spine apart, breathing in. And a little bent, weight on both feet, stretch up, and exhaling, pivot on over. And again, just deepen into that forward bend as much as your body wants. And lifting your sitting bones, getting a little more stretch maybe in the back of your legs if you like it. And then again, stay in your twist, just slowly work your way up and allow your elbows to come back and your chest to rise. Shoulders down, elbows stretching away, whole body opening along the spine as well as the front. And then inhale, upright, exhale to the center, arms up and out at shoulder level, palms toward the floor. Keep your back flat, pivot at the hip joint and come down until you're parallel to the floor. Stretch out back through the sitting bones, up through the crown, and then drop into ragdoll and just hang again, letting that lower back get a little stretch. 
If you like to stretch, you can bring your hands behind your legs and pull in a little bit more, but you don't have to. And then release the arms back to the front. Slide your hands up right under your knees, palms pressing into your shins, chest forward, top of the head and sitting bones stretching away against flat back nice and straight. Arms out to the side, shoulder level. Keep them there as you pivot up. Stretch out, inhale, look up, bring your palms together overhead, exhaling, hands to your heart, and pivot on over and come down all the way to the mat into child's pose. So sink back, hips on your heels. If you need padding, remember under your ankles, between your heels and hips or calves and thighs. Hands next to your feet, forehead coming down toward the mat. If it doesn't touch, you can pad under your head. And again, just give your spine a good stretch and feel the connection down into that surface beneath you. And then bring your arms out in front, plant your palms, and pivot up, bringing your knees under your hips. So we're coming into table position. Wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. Come up on your fingertips, press the Joints down, the base of your fingers down, and the heel of your palm down. Get the whole front of your hands, or whole base of your hands connected to the floor. And then stretch your legs out behind you, and we're coming into plank position. So wrists, elbows, and shoulders are lined up on the front, and then we're lining up shoulders, hips, and heels. Um, the plank position. So don't have your hips too high and don't let them sink down and overstrain your low back. So bring those bottom ribs up, supporting your spine. Press back through the heel, out to the crown. If this is too much, you can put your knees on the floor, but keep lifting that navel toward your spine, whether your knees are down or your knees are up. If your knees are up and you're going, ah, oh, this isn't really enough excitement in my middle solar plexus area. You can lift one leg at a time and reach back through that. And then putting that one down, do the other one evenly. Breathing, just make sure you keep lifting through the navel so that core is connected and the heels and crown are pressing away from each other. Take a moment to breathe. Now, if you're really good in the shoulders and wrists, you can shift forward so your shoulders are over your fingertips and lower with those elbows bending into chaturanga. Otherwise, put your knees down and just bend your body down to the floor, onto your stomach. So we're gonna take a moment in resting crocodile. So turn your head to the side, relax through the hips and the lower body, shoulders down toward the mat, head to one side, just taking a breath or two. And then on an exhalation, turn your head to the opposite side and allow the neck to get stretched evenly on both sides. So take a moment and breathe. And then turn your face toward the floor and slide your chin forward. We're going to do locusts. First, we're gonna do each leg separately. So you can keep your hands palms up for this one, or you can turn them palms down right at your side. And we're gonna do each leg separately initially. So kind of work into your hip joints, hip bones down, and get settled there. Keep the chin sliding forward unless it's too much on the back of your neck, in which case you can just put your forehead on the floor. So slide your right foot back just a little bit more, reach out through the base of your toes, and then keeping the hip bones down on both legs, you wanna rise up with that leg, keeping the knee and the top of the foot toward the floor so that that whole leg is kind of rotated a little bit inward to keep the alignment. So breathing, reach out through the base of the toes, exhale, relax down through your upper body, and keep the hip bones both as much as possible touching the floor. So we're not rising up too high and that hip on the side that's up in the air. If at any point it gets too much for you, just exhale that leg back down. Otherwise, see if you can maybe lift it a little bit higher. 
and slowly exhale down. As that foot touches, you can go ahead and tuck your forehead toward the mat to give that back of your neck a little bit of relief. And again, sink into both hips evenly. Relax down through the shoulders, hands, palms up or down, whichever feels better for you. And again, we're going to do one leg at a time. So slide your chin forward if that's comfortable for you. Slide back through the left leg, base of the toes. And again, keeping the hips down, just bring that leg up. So again, you're kind of rolling that hip in a little bit so that that whole leg stays straight and even, knee and top of the foot toward the floor. Stretch it out, lift that leg as high as you want it to go and press down through the hips, down through the shoulders, down or sliding the chin forward. And again, lower it if you need to, or if you love it, you can raise it even a little bit more, keeping that hip as toward the floor as possible. Take a breath and slowly exhale and bring that foot back down. Again, tuck your forehead toward the mat, get that neck and shoulder area stretching out a little bit more. Now we're going to do both feet together. So what you want to do with your hands is bring them either under your thighs with your hip bones down on your forearm or clasp your hands together and press your whole upper body or lower body down into the hands. And again, sliding the chin forward, lengthen through the back of the body, out through the toes. Keep the toes about hip or feet about hip width apart and pressing your arms, shoulders and hands down into the floor. Go ahead and lift both feet up as high as you want to with the hips pressing down into the arms. So go ahead and stretch out through the base of the toes. Keep that chin sliding forward if that works for you or tuck your forehead down toward the mat. And again, lifting your legs, stretching out through the base of the toes. Maximize that as much as you would like. Keep breathing, don't forget to breathe. And then as you're ready, stretch it out maybe a little higher and then exhaling, Slowly bring your feet to the floor. Release your arms. Tuck your forehead to the mat. Bring your hands under your shoulders and press up and back into child's pose. So just relax as you get into child's pose, letting that lower back get a little stretch where it was contracting as we were doing the locust. Take a breath. Just relax, let everything release any tension. And then bring your arms back out in front to the sides of the mat, pivot up and roll your body back onto your belly and then roll over onto your back. So as you come onto your back, just allow everything to release and relax down into the surface beneath you. Press your lower back down into the floor just a little bit and bend your knees, bringing your heels in next to your hips, feet flat on the floor. We're gonna bring the arms out to T position. And again, you can keep the hands palms up or if you need a little more stability, you can turn them palms down. Press your lower back sacrum area down into the floor a little bit more. And we're going to bring one leg up and then the other leg up toward the ceiling. Press your heels up and get the legs as straight as it's comfortable for you right above your hips. We're going to start with each leg separately. So take a moment to relax into the shoulders, into the arms, into the back of your body. And then as you exhale, leading with your heel, Slowly bring one leg down toward the floor, but don't touch. Press out through the bottom of your foot and inhale and bring that foot back up. And then we're going to do the same thing with the opposite leg. So leading with the heel, exhaling, slowly bring that heel toward the floor, but don't touch. 
press out through the bottom of your foot and inhale back toward the ceiling. Now, as you're doing this, you want to keep that navel pressing down toward the floor, back of your body connecting as much as you can. Exhaling one foot down, stretching it out, inhaling up. And again, exhaling down on the opposite leg, pressing it out, inhaling up. One more time. Let it move toward the floor and up. Moving toward the floor with the opposite leg, pressing it out and up. And of course, if you practice on your own, you can do that more times. But in order to do a few variety items today, we'll just do those. Now we're gonna do both legs together unless it's too much for you, in which case stick with the alternating legs. So again, as you exhale, both legs come down toward but not to the floor. Press out through the heel and inhale, bringing the feet back up. And again, just one more time, Press into the back of your body all the way down into the mat. Heels leading, slowly lowering those legs toward the floor, not to the floor. Press out through the bottoms of your feet and then inhaling back up. And then bending your knees, bring your heels and feet to the floor and just relax a moment, feeling that middle section of your body a little bit more heated and energized. So for our next abs focus, we're going to bring the hands near your sides and turn them palms up this time. Press your lower back and sacrum down into the floor, navel toward the mat. Stretch your, heel, your fingertips toward your heels and then rise up from your heart lifting your heart and your chin towards the ceiling. Don't tuck your chin and don't lift from your head. And then push your hands more toward your heels as you rise up through that heart center at your chest, keeping the navel pressing down. And then maximize that, lifting the heart and chest a little bit more and roll back onto your shoulder blades. And again, up toward the heels and shoulder blades back down. And just a little mini crunch, feeling that middle section of your body helping you do the work. And then exhaling, bring your body back to the mat and relax. And then bringing your hands back out to T position. Again, hands palms up. We're gonna press the low back down. And again, lifting the feet. You can bring them up together or one at a time toward the ceiling. So one more time, we're going to use the navel down, solar plexus down, keeping that core activated as we Lift one hand up and reach toward your opposite ankle. Again, lifting from the heart, not the head. And then exhale and come back down. Inhale, heart up, reaching across, getting that oblique working, as well as the middle abs, exhaling down. Inhaling and stretching up, exhale and coming back down. Inhale and reach across. Exhale and return to the mat. Once more up and down. And one final time, reaching across and back to the mat. So keeping your legs up, if that's comfortable, press the back down, just take a moment to breathe and relax. 
And we're going to either keep the palms up at shoulder level or turn them palms down onto the floor if you want a little more stability. And we're going to do one more sample exercise for the abs. So this time we're going to bend the knees and exhale, reaching the feet out along the floor, but not touching the floor. Again, you can flex the heels and press them out, turn the toes out, bring the legs back in, and feet toward the ceiling. And again, just a couple more times for the sample. Bring your legs down, stretch them out, flex the heels, bring it in, and raise your legs. Now, if you bring your feet down and extend them out, and you feel like your lower back is rising up a lot, then just keep your knees slightly bent. And then when you're ready, bring the legs in and up toward the ceiling again. And then exhaling, bring your feet back to the floor, heels right next to your hips, and relax. So feel that midsection a little bit more activated once again. For this next one, it's a low back strengthener as well as a little bit of an abs workout, and it's very gentle. It's one that physical therapists actually use to strengthen the low back for people who've had injuries. So this is a really good one for anybody that just needs a little strengthening through the back as well as the abs. So it's gonna tone the abs and give you a little more flexibility in that lower back. You can have your hands Palms up or down at your side, or you can keep them out to shoulder level, palms up or down, just your choice. So you're gonna press the whole back down into the floor, pulling that navel down, pulling the whole spine toward the mat. You may feel your sitting bones rise up a little bit, that's fine. And then as you exhale, you're gonna um, really get that whole core pressing down. And then on the inhalation, Lift your ribs up toward the ceiling, coming into your shoulder blades and bringing the sitting bones down toward the floor so that you get a space underneath your lower back, as much or as little as you would like. And again, pulling the ribs down, the spine down, the whole sacrum and lower back down, navel toward the floor, getting that abs area contracting just a little bit. And then inhaling, lifting the ribs, getting that lower back up off the floor, and sinking the sitting bones down. So again, exhaling down, feeling that contraction through the abdominal area, inhaling up, lifting, getting those ribs rising toward the ceiling as much as your body would like. And again, just relax into your position. Take a moment to breathe. And of course, we're running out of time and we do want a little bit of a relaxation. So go ahead and extend your legs out. Keep the toes and knees up toward the ceiling. So that's that inner rotation at the top of the thighs to keep everything lined up. Turn your hands, palms up, slightly away from your hips, away from your sides. Let the shoulders come down and feel your body. Let everything relax. Take a deep breath in. Especially notice your torso your abs, your back, let everything relax. Hands, palms up, and just letting your fingers cup around your palm, shoulders releasing, everything relaxing, letting your body sink into that surface beneath you. And before we do our relaxation, we're gonna do one more thing, a breathing exercise since we're trying to focus on using our lungs at full capacity during this COVID 
rehabilitation period. So this is called breath of fire. And what you wanna do is you wanna feel like you're only exhaling. In reality, the inhalation will happen automatically. This breath of fire, again, is going to help tone your abs a little bit if you can do it. For an extended period, that's fine. We're just going to do it very briefly before our relaxation. So imagine that you're blowing out a candle in front of you through your mouth for this one. So let your body sink down into that surface beneath you. And then using your lower abs, and your lower breath capacity to push that diaphragm up, emphasize the exhalation. So just 10 times in a row. And then just allow your body to relax again, feeling maybe a little bit more energized through that midsection. We're only going to do it that one set this time, but when you practice on your own, you can, of course, do that more either in a standing position, in a seated position, or here on the floor. So go ahead and allow your body now just to sink into that surface beneath you, relaxing everything, especially through that torso and spine that we've been working today. Let the breath deepen, so letting the diaphragm push, letting the belly rise as you breathe in, and letting it sink back down as you breathe out. And just scan through your body, let anything that's tight release, allowing your body to grow heavy and sink deeper into that surface beneath you. Just allow your body to release and relax, into its final meditative relaxation. As your body relaxes, just let awareness of your body go. No need to think about any parts of your body. Just let them relax deep into that earth embrace. And as your body relaxes and your mind releases thoughts of your body, just allow any thoughts that come to you to release as well. It's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, just let the thoughts drift away as easily as your breath. Each thought coming, releasing without attention. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. Just allow everything to release from your mind, to relax in your body. And as everything relaxes, just allow awareness to turn inward. Find the peace within and let that grow in your awareness filling your body with peace, filling your mind with peace, just being peace. And certainly, if you'd like that synaptic connection and 
cellular memory to continue building. Just keep relaxing for as long as you'd like. If you're ready to get on with the rest of your day, you can just bring energy and awareness back to all the parts of your body, breathing in to your body, into the room, into the moment. And as you become ready, just move your fingers and toes, arms and hands, legs and feet a little bit more. And when you become ready, just begin stretching more fully and breathing more deeply, stretching out and allowing your body to lengthen and release. When you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, press that middle back and sacrum down into the floor, pulling your navel down. Draw your knees up toward your heart, wrap your arms around and let your body know you appreciate its spot yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day and after your hug of appreciation just release back down and either relax some more or roll to the side and sit back up and get ready for the rest of your day thanks for joining me so thanks